Hello, my dear students. I have for you a very interesting activity for you. It is uh, a surprise uh, because today we have one extra lecture. Uh, previous lecture, I told you that we have two lectures about uh, biliary system and pancreas and one separate lecture about liver. But all information we discussed on previous lecture. That's why today we have a free time uh, and we have one extra lecture. And I'm trying to choose a topic for today's lecture, uh, maybe the most interesting for students and uh, the topic that usually the most uh, asked by students every year. And topic of our today's lecture is ACG basics. Uh, some moments of normal ACG and steps of ACG interpretation. It is not obligatory for you, but I think for most of you it will be very, very interesting. Uh, this lecture was prepared by a collective of authors, uh, several authors from other departments. These assistants are uh, Professor uh, Eugenia Golubkina, Olena Kanesheva, and Olena Timoshenka. And I'm co author, uh, as usually, my name is Maria Brinza. Introduction to our today's lecture. First of all, it is a moment from physiology. I hope you remember everything, but one more time, let's repeat. ACG, it is a recording of the electrical activity of the heart. Each heartbeat consists of one complete cycle of cardiac construction and relaxation that begins when the sinus node or SA node depolarize spontaneously. Contraction is provided by mechanism of depolarization of cardiac cells. Relaxation by mechanism of repolarization. Remember from physiology. Thus, cardiac cells can be in two states, resting state and depolarized state. Uh, resting state of cardiac cell. Yes, uh, in the rest, cardiac cells uh, are electrically polarized. Their insides are negatively charged and outside are charged positively. It is a rest state of uh, cardiac cell. This electrical polarity is maintained by membrane pumps that ensure the appropriate distribution of ions, primarily potassium, sodium, chloride and calcium. Necessary to keep the inside of these cells relatively electronegative. Depolarization of cardiac cells. Here, cell one was in a rest state and it's starting of depolarization and mechanically constriction of the cell. Depolarization is the process when the cardiac cell loses its internal negativity by changing the charge. Depolarization is uh, propagated from cell to cell, producing a wave of depolarization that can be transmitted across the entire heart. And pictures here interesting. Yes, first it is depolarization of single cell. Yes, it is automatic cell that automatically uh, got depolarization and after it sent depolarization to all other cells in different sites. Yes, that in by cell to cell it goes depolarization. And you see that it uh, become constriction of those involved cells. After depolarization is complete, the cardiac cells are able to restore their resting polarity through a process called repolarization. The electrical tracing obtained after record one electrical cycle of depolarization and repolarization from a single cell is called an action potential. Yes, and here you see a picture one more time. Uh, it is process uh, of repolarization, the opposite process. Yes, on first line it is the cells are depolarized. Second, it is starting of repolarization, yet it goes relaxation. And on third picture, it is all cells are in resting stage. And it is a reminding for you from physiology too, it is myocardial pot uh, action potential. One more time, from what phases it goes. Yes, first, it is membrane resting potential when cell in rest. Uh, after it goes very rapid depolarization till the overshoot. 
after it goes plot of phase yes when during sometimes uh, our cells are depolarized and constriction are constricted and after it goes repolarization yes it is opposite changes of ions uh, with restoring of ionic balance and lead to relaxation complete relaxation of heart uh, the heart contains uh, several types of cells uh, it is usually three physiological types of cells. First, it is pacemaker cells. If you remember, it usually started from one uh, cell for, with automaticity. It is a cell that are uh, able spontaneously give electrical impulse. It is a normal electrical power source of the heart. Uh, we have another type of cells. It is electrical conducting cells. It is a wiring of the heart. These cells are not able to spontaneously constrict. Uh, they are not such an unstable. They are more stable, stable, but they are able to conduct. Yes, and they take function of virus. And of all other, it is uh, uh, all mass of heart, most mass of heart, it is myocardial usual cells. They are not able to, in the physiological state, uh, they are not able to constrict spontaneously, they are not able to conduct electrical impulse, but they are, can sense the electrical impulse and in response of this impulse to constrict. It is contractile machinery of heart. Okay, first cells, pacemakers. Physiologically, in normal person without any disorders, they are located in upper part of right atrium and able to depolarize spontaneously at a particular rate, normally at 60 to 100 times per minute, at rest. The rate of depolarization is determined by the innate electrical characteristics of the cell and by influence of autonomous nervous system and hormonal status. Each spontaneous depolarization serves as the source of a wave of depolarization that initiates one complete cycle of cardiac construction and relaxation. And one uh, very important moment here. Every cell in heart actually has the ability to behave like a pacemaker cell. Yes, it is conducting cells, it is usual cardiomyocytes that can constrict it in different conditions, they can take function of pacemaker. But this ability normally is suppressed unless the dominant cells in the sinus not fail or if something in the internal or external environment of the cell, sympathetic stimulation, cardiac disease, etc., stimulates its automatic behavior. Yes, and uh, it is connection between autonomous nervous system and sinoatrial node. Yes, it very dependent from autonomous nervous system of sympathetic parasympathetic balance. Yes, and uh, here is very funny pictures with, uh, that shows what type of nervous system is activated when it is stress, when it is some physical activity, when it is. Uh, some uh, goal in this organism, it is a hyperactivation of sympathetic nervous system. It accelerates as a node and uh, heart rate become rapid sinus node, give, uh, give more fast electrical impulses and it lead to more fast constriction of heart and the organism uh, is compensate a very high stress. Is it physical activity? Is it emotional stress? Or both of them. And opposite situation, for example, when a person hears a beer, when, uh, for example, during sleeping, it is uh, activation of parasympathetic nervous system. And uh, because in this moment it uh, uh, don't have to be such a fast heart rate, it is activation of parasympathetic nervous system, uh, it is slows as a node. And during uh, sleep, during night, uh, this heart rate is okay for the organ. Next type of cells it is conducting cell. Uh, these cells carry current to distant region of heart. Here you see skin with these conducted uh, conductive uh, cells in a heart structure. Yes, you remember that they are goes uh, from the SA node. 
uh, and uh, uh, after it, it goes sign atrial node. Uh, pacemaker, it goes to intranodal pathway. After intranodal pathway, uh, the electrical gimbals go like a wave through the atriums in the uh, to the anterior ventricular node. It is second uh, type. It is intraatrial branches and uh, atrial ventricular node. It is conducting cells. After uh, atrial ventricular node, it goes to atrial ventricular bundle or his bundle by author. Uh, his bundle it is very short and after this short distance it divided on two branches usually two branches it is right and left bundle branches and after it it goes for more small branches smaller smaller and conducting cells finished in purkinje fibers it is the smallest branches and smallest uh, uh, ways uh, that able to conduct electrical impulse. After Purkinje fibers, it goes just usual constrict, uh, constricted cardiomyocytes. Uh, bundle of his. It is very important conductive and electrical organ in our heart. The bundle of his in the right and left bundle branches. I told you. The right bundle branch carries the current down the right side in the intraventricular septum all the way to the apex or of the right ventricle. The left bundle branch divided into three major facilities. It is septal facile, which depolarizes the intraventricular septum and left to right direction. It is anterior facile, which runs along the anterior surface of the left ventricle and posterior facile, which sweeps over the posterior surface of the left ventricle. And last type, it is usual myocardial cells that able just to sense and constrict. The myocardial cells constitute the major part of the heart tissue. They are responsible for the contracting and relaxing. They contain contractile proteins, action and myosin. When a wave of depolarization reaches a myocardial cell, calcium is released within the cell, allows actin and myosin to interact, causing the cell to contract. This process is called excitation-construction coupling. Myocardial cells can transmit the electrical current just like electrical conducting cells, but they do it far less efficiently. Thus, a wave of depolarization upon reaching the myocardial cells will spread slowly across the entire myocardium. Okay, next term for today it is a mean electrical vector of heart. What is that? Yes, you uh, can image uh, anatomically what the wave of electrical impulse, what the wave of electrical depolarization of heart, and if all these uh, small waves we are uh, mathematically summarized, yes, geometrically summarized, we uh, get on the picture the one big vector of main uh, direction of electrical activity. This uh, geometrical presentation uh, and this main vector we uh, name mean electrical vector. When the ventricles undergo depolarization, the wave of depolarization uh, that spreads across the muscle mass occurs in many different directions simultaneously. Yes, by this scheme, on this picture, you see it by red arrows, that it is a very big number of uh, different ways of depolarization. The vectors swing progressively leftward because the electrical activity, it is a much larger leftward ventricle, increasingly dominates. The overage vector, yes, if we summarized all these arrows in one vector, uh, the average vector of all the intra, uh, intratanous vectors is called the mean electrical vector. On this picture we see it by blue arrow. And normally points leftward the inferiorly. 
The direction of the mean vector is called the electrical axis of the heart or the QRS axis. The axis of P wave and T wave can also be defined. And uh, for what we trying to remember, trying to remind uh, all moments from physiology of electrical activity of heart. Yes, now we're starting uh, a talk about ACG. ACG recording, it is a recording of electrical activity. Yes, we uh, uh, now we talk about some moments, about main moments, about electrical activity, and after it we're trying to record it. How to record? They are recorded by placing of electrodes on uh, the body surface of patients. And uh, we place it in different parts. Now we discuss which parts. And uh, these electrodes measure the difference in electrical potential every moment in this, uh, between each other in these electrodes. And according to this difference in electrical potentials, we can measure and we can uh, draw the electrical activity of heart. Yes, the main uh, leads, uh, main four leads, we name it limb leads, they are placed on arms and legs. Uh, usually we uh, marked it by colors. Yes, it is a red color, yellow, green and black. It is three active electrodes and one black, it is negative electrodes. Uh, and red uh, limb lead are placed on the right arm. Uh, yellow or L, uh, it placed on left arm. Uh, F lead or uh, green lead, it placed on the left leg. And on the right leg, it placed M lead or negative lead or black lead. And additionally to limb leads, uh, we placed, uh, we usually placed on in typical ACG, uh, on the chest surface, chest leads. Uh, we name it um, uh, by letter V, by V1 to V6, according to uh, the lead. And you s here you see a scheme according to line, uh, ribs and intracostal spaces, where, where are the points of placing uh, uh, electrodes, chest electrodes, from V1 to V6. And lip leads. Uh, the difference between them, remember it is three active leads, not four, just three active leads. And vectors between them for us uh, show uh, first uh, six, uh, three main and three additional uh, electrical, uh, electrical potential. Uh, the first lead of standard ACG, it goes from the right arm to the left arm, it is lead one. Lead two go from the right uh, arm to the left leg and lead three go from the left arm to the left leg and three additional uh, three additional or augmented limb plates we name it avl avr and avf uh, according to where goes this potential which to, for what uh, for what direction? Uh, because uh, lead AVL goes to the left arm, uh, lead AVR goes to the right arm, and lead AVF go to the foot, uh, active left foot. And uh, according to six uh, six chest limbs. We are uh, on ACG recording, we get six chest uh, leads uh, with uh, recording. We named V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, according to the same, the limbs and leads. Here, one more time, it is a scheme of placing of chest electrodes, yes, and uh, in which direction, what vector responsible for which lead. And uh, let's return to the previous picture. 
uh, according to in what leads we find some changes especially local changes especially that are connected with ischemia of repolarization changes or some other local problems yes if we see changes in v1 v2 it is septal lithia respond responsible for intraventricular septum v3 v4 it is anterior leads leads 2 3 and avf it is inferior leads leads 1 avl v5 v6 it is lateral left lateral leads and avr it is usually not a very informative it is additional and not responsible for some specific locus one more time acg leads you see that lateral first v5 v6 and avl in blue color in green color it is inferior leads 2 3 and avf and anterior and septal it is v1 v2 v3 v4 okay uh, how to determine that something wrong yes uh, for it we have in every lead in every recording we have typical acg complex that consisted of uh, several waves and intervals uh, between them uh, segments and intervals between them and according to their size their form uh, their amplitude uh, and their duration we can uh, check the normality of electrical activity in heart yes uh, what characteristic we can uh, check uh, in every wave First, it is duration. Yes, it is uh, in the ACG recording. It is length of this wave. Next, it is amplitude. Uh, it measured by millivolts and it is high of uh, this wave. And configuration, the size, the shape and appearance of the wave. Uh, segments and intervals. What is the difference between them? Yes, sometimes we name uh, some period segment and sometimes we name it interval. Uh, it is very important difference between them. Because the segment, it is a straight line connecting two ways. It is always straight uh, line. And interval, it includes uh, at least one wave plus connecting straight line. For example, uh, if you uh, pay attention to the picture, uh, find uh, two, the first two waves, it is P waves and Q waves. And the line between them we named PR segment, not PQ, because Q is usually in uh, usual ACG, it's not visible at all, or visible very, very small. That's why uh, traditionally uh, the segment named PR. The line between P and R, it is a segment. And uh, the period in ACG recording, including P wave and PR segment, the line, straight line, uh, we named PR interval. Interval, it is a wave and line. A segment, it is always just line between waves. And uh, here, let's remind you one more time, main ACG components. Yes, it is P wave uh, and PR interval that included P wave and PR segment. After it goes QRS complex, it is negative Q, positive R wave and negative S wave. After it goes ST segment and T wave and uh, the general uh, the general interval that we usually miss you to in ACG interpretation it is QT interval it is interval that included QRS complex ST segment and T wave all this period we named QT interval it is a main component of ACG complex wave deflections in waveform above the isoelectric line is considered a positive or upright deflection and any waveform below this line a negative or downward deflection a deflection having both a positive and negative component is called by biphastic deflection this basic concept can be applied to p wave the qrs complex and t wave deflections 
uh, yes, here are examples of deflections. It can have a positive deflection, for example, normally in most lead R wave or T wave or P wave they have positive deflection. Uh, in some cases, a uh, wave can have biphastic deflection. Yes, it usually says you about some pathology. For example, sometimes P wave can be deflected. It can be it can have positive part and negative part. It will say about a hypertrophy or uh, some changes in atrium. And wave can have negative deflection. It's typical, for example, for Q wave, for S wave in normal uh, ACG, and in some pathological cases, it can be negative, uh, can have negative deflection other waves. First wave, it is P wave. Let's discuss it. The, the P wave records atrial depolarization and construction. The first part of the P wave reflects right atrial activity. The second part usually left atrial activity. Yes, by scheme you see uh, the up, uh, first part it is right atrium, next part it is left atrium. After P wave and conduction uh, of its activity through the atrium, the electrical impulse, you remember, go to the AV node. And here are some uh, specific uh, moments in conduction through the AV node. Once atrial depolarization is complete, the ECG becomes electrically silent because of physiological delay. Conduction path in the atrial ventricular node that acts like a gatekeeper between atrium and ventricle. It fix and block uh, electrical activity for some time. Why we need it? Because in this moment atriums are completely constricted, ventricles are completely relaxed and we need this time to go blood uh, from the atriums to ventricles during normal diastole. Uh, this part of pause is essential to allow atria to finish contracting before the ventricles begin contract. PR segment and PR intervals. We discuss difference between them. PR interval includes uh, the P wave and straight line connecting it to the QRS complex. It measures the time from the start of atrial depolarization to the start of ventricular depolarization. The PR segment is a straight line running from the end of P wave and start to the QRS complex and measures the time from the end of atrial depolarization to the start of ventricular depolarization. After it goes, after the uh, PR segment goes QRS complex. It is complex that is responsible for, uh, for constriction of ventricles. The appearance of QRS complex indicates ventricular myocardial depolarization and thus ventricular construction. Ventricular depolarization starts with septum. The amplitude of the QRS complex is much greater than that atrial P wave because of the more prominent muscle mass of the ventricles. The QRS complex may have variable shape and configuration. Usually it looks like on a small picture in the down of the slide. Uh, parts of QRS complex. Yes, it consists of three waves. Two negative waves, it is Q and S wave, and one in the middle uh, of them, one positive big R wave. Q wave, it reflects the depolarization of septum with electrical vector directed right and downward, negative deflection. And R wave, that deflects depolarization of apical part of ventricular myocardium with electrical vector directed left and down. And S wave, it represents progression of depolarization over the ventricles, vector extends upward. Q and S waves. The downward deflection can only be called a Q wave if it is in the first wave of the complex. If you, for example, see something uh, after, you see positive wave and negative wave after the positive, it will be always S. It never can be Q. If you see Q, it's just something before positive R wave. 
Uh, any other downward I told deflection is called as an S wave. If the entire configuration consists solely of uh, one downward deflection, the wave is called QS wave. T wave and ST segment. After short refractory period characterized by isoline on ACG, appears T wave indicating ventricular repolarization and mechanical relaxation. This period, refractory period, with isoline with no electrical activity, we name ST segment. Uh, the ST segment is a straight line connecting the end of the QRS complex with the beginning of the T wave. ST segment may shift the time from the end of ventricular depolarization to the start of ventricular repolarization. The important moment, the atrial repolarization wave, is buried under the QRS complex. It's not visible. And QT interval. I told you that it is interval included QRS complex, ST segment and T wave. It measures the time from the beginning of the ventricular depolarization to the end of ventricular repolarization. The corrected QT interval or QTC estimates the QT interval due to the heart rate. It is calculated by formula using the QT interval and heart rate uh, in this moment of ACG. Yes, typical formula looking like uh, uh, this. We name it Bazet formula, uh, where QTC uh, corrected interval it is measured QT divided on quadrat from the RR in seconds. Duration of the main ACG components. Yes, here uh, the picture is normal of duration of main components. For P wave, it is from 0 0.08 to 0 0.1 second. For PR interval, it from 0 0.12 to 0 0.2 seconds. For QRS complex, normal duration will be from 0 0.06 to 0 0.1 seconds and QTC corrected interval less than 0 0.44 seconds. And ACG interpretation. When we try to interpret uh, ACG, uh, what main moments we check? It is a heart rate. It can be normal, tachycardia and bradycardia. It is heart rhythm that can be sinus or non-sinus, and it can be regular and irregular. It is electrical axis, it can be normal, left axis deviation, right axis deviation. And we check uh, sizes, shape, uh, duration, amplitude of waves and intervals. We check for signs of hypertrophy of heart tumors. We check for signs of ischemia and myocardial infarctions. And check for signs for different conduction disturbances. Uh, usually it is AV blocks and bundle range blocks. Let's very quickly discuss what is that. Uh, we don't have enough time for it. More information about ACG interpretation at practical classes in our scientific meetings. Uh, and who wants you in our department have additional distance course about ACG basics uh, that you can uh, use in your education. Uh, how to calculate quickly? Uh, yes, most ACG papers are, are printed on uh, uh, paper with specific boxes that lined uh, on big boxes and small boxes. Big box, it is uh, 5 millimeters for 5 millimeters and their duration it is 0 0.1 second. And small boxes, it is millimeter by millimeter, and uh, they are uh, measured uh, in typical uh, in typical uh, velocity 0 0.02 second. If the ACG recording more rapid, for example, 25 millimeters per second, it is twice faster. Uh, heart rate evaluation for regular rhythm. Count the number of big boxes between two QRS complexes and divide this into 300 or 600 depending on speed, if it's 25 
uh, or 50 millimeters per second relatively. Count the number of small boxes between two QRS complexes and divide this into uh, 1500 or 3000, depend on speed. Heart rate it is 60 divided on RR interval in seconds. Uh, here you can uh, calculate uh, calculate heart rate uh, according to uh, big boxes method in this recording. Here you can stop pictures and in comments write please what in first picture will be heart rate. Uh, next picture for your individual work. Uh, for speed 25 millimeters per second, uh, you see formulas, and for speed 50 millimeters per second, you see formulas for heart rate 2. Please, on this uh, picture, calculate the heart rate. Rhythm. Presence of positive P wave on the same shape before QRS complex indicates presence of sinus rhythm. We told that rhythm is non-sinus just when you can't see the presence of uh, positive P wave the same shape. The negative P waves in sinus rhythm can be seen in lead AVR. For this lead it is physiological change. Equal RR intervals are uh, equal, it means that differ between RR, they can't be absolutely equal, but if difference not more than 10%, uh, we name it equal. If it is equal, we uh, name it, uh, it indicate regular rhythm. And uh, practical, one more practical part for you, please try to check regularity, is this rhythm sinus or non-sinus on this picture, and is it regular or irregular, I wait for your answers in comments. And one more time reminding for you how to check it in this practical part. Uh, Non-sinus or ectopic pacemakers, yes, uh, when it is some pathology, when the electrical signal is generated from the group of cells outside the CSA node, ectopic focus, normally it can be uh, generated just in SA node. If it is outside from SA node, it calls non-sinus or ectopic pacemaker. The ectopic focus can be in atria, junction or AV node or in the ventricles at any point of heart. It may cause such a pathologies like promature beats or extra systoles, it is the same, SK beats and pacing of the heart. It is atrial rhythm, junctional rhythm, rhythms and ventricular rhythms. And uh, in different disturbances, according to the locus of ectopic pacemaker, it uh, more usual different heart uh, rate. If ectopic point placed in atria, usually heart rate uh, from 60 to 75, which is quite normal. Uh, if it is junctional pacemaker or from a pacemaker from AV node, usually heart rhythm will be from 40 to 60 because AV node not able to produce such a fast uh, uh, beats like atrias or SA node. And if pacemaker in ventricles, it uh, they can produce a more slow uh, rhythm and usual heart rate for ventricle pacemaker from 20 to 40. The important uh, the activity of the sinus ectopic pacemaker is normally suppressed by high rate of SA node 60 by 100 beats per minute. That's why usually in uh, physiologically they are not active. Uh, ectopic pacemaker. Here you see an example of ectopic pacemaker. You see it but by a big uh, red arrow. It plays on the apex of left ventricle. Yes, it is ventricle, ventricle ectopic pacemaker. And on ACG you see a picture of a promethe bead uh, from ventricles or extrasystole from ventricles. And you see complexes that it normal, normal, normal. After it premature ventricular construction of ventricular extrasystole and after it returns to normal and you see two more normal complexes. Promethe bead. 
It arises from the anectopic pacemaker in the atria, the AV junction of the ventricles. The non-sinus impulse is early initiating a heart before the next anticipated sinus beat implies. The reason the ectopic focus discharged a pacing impulse early in this instance is because the ectopic focus is irritable and competes with the sinus node. And what is escape beat? An escape beat is a heartbeat arising from the ectopic focus in the atria, the AV junction or the ventricles when the sinus node fails in its role and uh, as a pacemaker or when the sinus impulse fails to be conducted to the ventricle uh, as incomplete heart block. Yes, you see here example. Yes, it looks literally the same like Promethe beat, but if Promethe beat it is Promethe, it becomes earlier than normal sinus beat. Here you see normal, normal, normal complex update pause and like a compensation, ventricles give escape beat. Uh, that by form looks like ventricle promethe beat or ventricle extracystola and it gives uh, the possibility to return to normal sinus root and next complex it's absolutely normal. Heart rate abnormality. Yes, for sinus rhythm it, will, it can be sinus tachycardia and bradycardia. If we told that it rests normal sinus, uh, sinus uh, rate, it is from 60 to 100. If it is less than 60, we name it sinus bradycardia. If it is faster than 100, it is sinus tachycardia. For non-sinus rhythm, what rate abnormality we can find? In atria, it is supraventricle tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, and multifocal atrial tachycardia. For AV node, it is junctional rhythm and junctional tachycardia. And for ventricles, it is ventricular tachycardia, idioventricular rhythm, accelerated idioventricular rhythm, and ventricle fibrillation. Heart rate and read abnormalities. It is the same one more time, the same slide. Uh, okay, abnormalities with electrical axis of the heart. You remember the mean electrical vector uh, on the ACG interpretation. We interpret uh, this vector like electrical axis. Yes, it is this way, this position of this electrical vector. How it check? Is it normal or is it not normal? Normally, the position of mean electrical axis lies in range from 0 to uh, 90 degrees. It is uh, placed by uh, number 1. If it is placed uh, by number 2 and extend in the level from uh, minus 30 to 90 degrees, uh, it is deviation of electrical axis. Yes, position. You see by a sector. Yeah, in one sector it is normal position of heart. In right uh, sector, uh, red sector, it is left axis deviation. In sector from 90 to 180, uh, it is violet sector. It is right axis deviation. And in very rare cases, it can be positioned in duct violet from minus 90 to uh, 180. It is extreme rapid axis deviation. Uh, wave deflections and mean electrical vector, they are dependent on each other. The positive wave deflection is recorded by lead if the wave of depolarization is moving toward it. Yes, it will be positive wave recorded on ACG. A negative wave deflection is recorded by lead if the wave depolarization is moving away from it. And biphastic wave deflection recorded by the lead if the depolarization wave is the moving perpendicular to it. As you see, why we have some waves positive, some waves negative. It depends on um, if the vector or in this place uh, what a relation with the mean electrical vector. Electrical axis determination, uh, a first method how to determine position of electrical axis. 
if we see dominant R wave in lead 1 and AVF, uh, we usually have a normal position for 0 to 90 degrees of electrical axis. Uh, if the dominant R wave in lead 1 and dominant S wave in lead AVF, it uh, relatively says us about left axis deviation. If we see dominant R wave in lead 1, the opposite, and dominant S wave uh, in lead AVF, it will be right axis deviation. And if we see dominant S wave in lead 1 and AVF, it will be extreme right axis deviation. Uh, and uh, electrical axis determination and bifastic lead. Analysis on bifastic leads allows a more precise estimation of electrical axis. Uh, like an example, if QRS complex in lead 3 is bifastic, then the axis must be oriented at the right angles to this lead, and either from 30 to minus 150. And if we already know that the axis is normal, but is if the QRS complex is positive in lead 1 and AVF, then the axis can't be the minus 150, but must be the plus 30. You see it on the picture. Causes of uh, axis deviation. Uh, we have mnemonics for different deviations. For Ralph deviation, it is Ralph, Ralph mnemonic. The most often cause it is right, right ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, another cause it is anterior lateral MI and left posterior hemi block. And from left axis deviation, it is typical mnemonic by causes villa. What causes can lead to left axis deviation? It is ventricular tachycardia, inferior MI, uh, left ventricle hypertrophy, and left anterior hemi block. Practical part for you. Please try to check what position of electrical axis of the heart on this ACG. Who are interested in, please stop the video and write me in comments answer on this third case. Here you see the interpretation and the right answer of this uh, picture. And one more explanation about position of electrical axis here. Normal P wave. What features it have? The normal P wave is positive uh, normally in lead 1 to AVF, V4, V6 and negative in AVR in the same direction as QRS complex. It is often bifastic in leads 3 and V1 with similar sizes of the positive and negative deflections. It is the best visualized in lead 2, AVF and V1. The P wave in lead 2 is typically rounded and upright in appearance. The duration of P wave is less than 0.12 seconds. We discuss it. The amplitude of P waves is less than 2.5 mm in lead leads and less than 1.5 mm in precordial or chest leads. Key points, um, key points in P wave interpretation. Uh, first moment that you have to decide for you it if P wave is present or not, because uh, if a rhythm is non sinus, it will be no P waves at all. That's why after it any interpretations of P wave and P P R interval. Uh, if it present, if it positive or negative, inverted, or uh, maybe it is B fastic. Amplitude of P wave increased, normal or decreased. Is P wave is widened. Shape of P wave it can be rounded or and upright, peaked, flattened, bifastic, notched, M shaped. Is it present before each QRS complex or before some complexes it not present? That is, it have the same shape and morphology before each QRS complex, and does the atrial rate correspond to ventricular rate? What abnormalities are most often we can find? Different shape of P wave. It can be ectopic atrial focus, 
uh, Wandering Atwell Peacemaker Multifocal Atwell Tachycardia when every next P wave be different in duration and shape. Signs of atrial hypertrophy. Uh, we usually name the most typical changes P mitrale and P pulmonale. More information on practical classes. Inverted P wave, junctional premature or escape beat, and junctional rhythm. Ectopic atrial focus near the AV node. If it is absence of P wave, it can say us about atrial fibrillation, the most often situation when F small F wave present instead. It can be atrial flutter when big F waves present instead. It can say it about sinoatrial block, about junctional premature or escape beat, about junctional rhythm, premature ventricular construction, idioventricular rhythm, ventricle tachycardia, ventricle fibrillation. All ventricle uh, arrhythmias will go without P waves. And practical part for you, evaluate characteristics of P wave and rhythm on the ACG below. Please read, rate and characteristics of P wave, try to decide on this uh, picture and write uh, for me in comments. It is a picture uh, and case for, for you. And uh, if it's interesting, please stop video and write, uh, because on next uh, slide it is uh, answer yes here you see small f waves about what arrhythmia it told it told about atrial fibrillation normal pr intervals features it measures from the beginning of the up slope of p wave of the beginning to the qrs complex talked about it pr interval normal from 0 0.12 to 0 0.2 seconds it shortens with the increased heart rate the PR segment is usually horizontal and runs along the same baseline at the start of the P wave. Key points. If the PR interval present at all, if no P wave, it will be no PR interval. Uh, is its duration normal? Shorten it, widen it. Is the duration of PR constant before each QRS? And is the PR segment depression or elevation? Uh, here you see examples of depression uh, and elevation. Uh, and what abnormalities we can find? Short PR. It's typical for Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, for long gone Clevine syndrome and other causes, for example, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, type 2 glycogen storage disease or POMS disease and uh, HOCM. Long PR interval. It is AV block first degree or a trifascicular block. Change in duration in PR when it change from cycle by cycle. It is AV block second degree. And PR segment depression and elevation typical for acute pericarditis and atrial infarctions. QRS complex features. Normal Q wave in first, second AVL, AVF, V5, V6 is less than 0.03 seconds in V4, 0.02 seconds. The appearance of Q wave in V1, V3 is abnormal. Duration of QRS complex is 0.06 from 0.1 seconds. R wave progression, the pattern seen in the chest leads characterized by change from the S wave being prominent in V1 and V2 to the R wave being prominent in V4, V5, V6 with transposition point in V3 via QRS complex in B fastic. Uh, key points for what we check uh, when we evaluate QRS complex. Is the width of QRS normal, widened or narrowed? Are there any pathological Q waves? Are there any delta waves present, additional waves? Is the amplitude of voltage of QRS complex normal, high or low? Is there change in amplitude of QRS complex from B to B? And is there normal R wave progression in precordial leads? Low and high voltage, you see here, causes of low voltage. Uh, the amplitudes of QRS complex in limb leads less than 5 mm, in precordial chest leads less than 10 mm. 
and high voltage in the 4V5 R plus S more than 35 millimeters, in AVL R more than 11 millimeters, in second, third, and AVF more than 20 millimeters, and V5 V6 more than 26 millimeters. It will be high voltage. You see on the pictures example of low voltage and high voltage QRS. Pathological Q wave. The depth of the pathological Q should be at least 25% of the depth of the associated R wave duration more than 0.04 seconds. The Q wave should appear in at least two continuous slits. Any Q wave in leads V4, V1, V3 with a duration more than 0.02 seconds are likely to be pathological. Not a banner, please be attentive. Apparently, pathological QVs may have a teeny R deflection. Uh, presenting them indicates that it is no Q wave at all. What is delta wave or additional wave? It is a slurred upstroke in the QRS complex, often associated with a short PR interval, in the most commonly associated with the pre-excitation syndrome, such as Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Here we see the comparison of normal QRS complex and QRS complex with additional delta wave uh, that is associated with short PR interval. Abnormalities of QRS complex narrow. It's typical for supraventricular regions, white, for bundle branch block, ventricular extrasystals, ventricular regions, tachycardia, pacemaker with ventricular stimulation, for Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, hyperkalemia drugs. A high amplitude of QRS, typical for ventricular hypertrophy, uh, which is uh, responsible for arterial hypertension, cardiomyopathy, at left heart, thin chest wall in young adults. Low amplitude uh, is uh, responsible for pericardial pleural effusion, emphysema, pneumothorax, previous massive MI, advanced dilated cardiomyopathy, infiltrative or connective tissue disease like this uh, restrictive cardiomyopathy or, for example, amyloidosis, scleroderma, etc. Changing amplitude in QRS complex from one bin to another or electric alternance is typical for cardiac tamponade and pericardial infusions. Uh, and for like a practical part, please uh, fix this picture and try to evaluate characteristics of QRS complex on the ACG below. And correct answer on previous picture. Uh, complex abnormalities, abnormal R wave progression, right and left ventricular hypertrophy, MI, cardiomyopathy, dextrocardia. If it pathological Q wave, it can say us about MI. Abnormal Q waves may also be seen in pneumothorax, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, amyloidosis, myocarditis, etc. And delta wave is typical for pre excitation, especially Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. Normal ST segment features. The ST segment is flat, is an electric uh, section between the end of S wave, the G point, and beginning of the T wave. Uh, the transition from the ST segment to the T wave is smooth, not abrupt. Duration of the ST segment is not important, but its deviation from the ESA line has a clinical value. Normal T wave features. T wave is always upright in first, second, V4, V6 and inverted in the AVR. It may be inverted in V1 too. The amplitude of the normal T wave is one third to uh, two thirds uh, that of the corresponding R wave. The highest amplitude of T is usually seen in V2, V3. T usually uh, corresponds with R waves. Positive QRS complex is followed with positive T wave. Changes in ST segment are frequently accompanied with T wave changes due to its electrophysiological relation and cause ST T changes. Key points that we evaluate on ACG in ST T changes is the ST segment or the isoline or it's elevated or depressed. 
there are characteristic of ST elevation. Is it convex, unsloping, downsloping, horizontal, concave? Are the T wave positive, flattened, inverted, biphastic? Does the amplitude of T wave correspond with the amplitude of the T wave? If these ST elevations with simultaneous ST depressions uh, in the electrical opposite leads uh, in one ECG strip, are the ST T changes associated with the wide bizarre QRS complexes? Here are examples of ST elevation on first picture when G point displays above the bezel line and second picture it is ST depression when the G point is displaced below the bezel line. Uh, ST elevation characteristics. Uh, usually, uh, most often uh, it goes are about ischemic changes. What is ischemic ST elevation types? It can be convex, straight up sloping, straight horizontal, straight down sloping. Usually present convex, straight ST segment elevation, straight down sloping ST elevation is unusual. ST segment tends to match in uh, percentability with uh, the T wave. There is usually reciprocal ST depression in the electrically opposite lead. And more rare case, it is known as chemic ST elevation type. It's usually concave. Uh, it's not merged with T wave. A T wave maintained its independent waveform in this case. Depression characteristic. This T depression in less than 0.5 mm is accepted as normal in all leads. Yes, less than 0.5 mm, uh, half mm, it's not depression usually at all. More than 0.5 mm in two cont uh, contiguous leads is abnormal. Uh, ST segment elevation is characteristic for acute MI, Prince metals, angina, pericarditis, benign early repolarization, left bundle branch block, non specific bundle branch block, left ventricle hypertrophy, ventricular extracystals, Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, and hyperkalemia. ST segment depression most often responsible for myocardial ischemia, myocardial infarction, supraventricular tachycardia, uh, heart failure, ventricular hypertrophy, left bundle branch block, digoxin effect, uh, pacemakers, etc. T wave abnormality high comp amplitude T waves. Uh, special for hyperkalemia, hyperacute T waves in early stages of MI, flattened and inverted T waves for hyperventilation, anxiety, drinking ice water, neurocirculatory dystonia, a bundle branch blocks, pre excitation syndrome, ventricular hypertrophy. Normal QT uh, interval features. The duration is usually less than. 440 for men, 460 for women. QT duration related to heart rate, the slower is the heart rate, the longer is QT interval and vice versa. Uh, formula, we discuss it, uh, Bazet formula. Normalized or corrected QT interval allows comparison of QT values over time at different heart rates and improves detection of the patients and increased risk of arrhythmias. Uh, corrected QT more than 500 milliseconds is associated with increased risk of torsal to the points arrhythmia. QTC are normally short if it is less than 350. Measurement. It goes, uh, should be measured in lead 2, V5, V6, they are the most informative for this interval. Several successive bits should be measured with the maximum interval taken. Key points of QT interval. Is the interval normal, shortened or prolonged and is the value of QTC? Prolonged QT interval is typical for congenital prolonged QT syndrome for using some drugs like antiarrhythmic sotalol, aniodarone, prokinamide, uh, tricyclic antidepressants, lithium, antibiotics, macrolides. Moreover, uh, it's typical for hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, hypothermia, hypothyroidism, bradycardia, etc. 
importance and prolonged duty interval may lead to life treating ventricular arrhythmias, the most typical torsado points. And opposite situation, short QT interval, it is uncommon, rarely may be seen in hypokalemia and may cause malignant arrhythmias too. Practical part, please miss you on this picture, QT interval, uh, corrected for uh, the heart rate by the formula on this ACG strip and find QTC. Here is correct answer for you. Signs of atrial atrophy, uh, hypertrophy, sorry, for left atrium hypertrophy, P mitrali. Uh, you see it on the first picture, it is right M-shaped P-wave in lead 2, increase of the negative deflection of P-wave in V1. And op opposite the right atrium hypertrophy that we name usually P pulmonale, it is peaked P wave in lead 2 um, with amplitude more than 2.5, increase of initial positive deflection of P wave in V1. Uh, signs of ventricle hypertrophy. For left ventricle hypertrophy, uh, typical left axis deviation, we talk about it on axis deviations. Uh, moreover, the additional characteristics when R in V5 or V6 and S in V1 and V2 in uh, summa more than 35 mm. It is Sokolov lines criteria. Uh, important, you should choose largest wave, not both V1 and V2 or V5 and V6. Uh, if R in AVL more than 11 mm and R in V5 or V6 more than 26 mm. When it is right ventricle hypertrophy, a criteria is uh, right axis deviation, R wave more than S wave in V1 and R in V1 plus S in V5 or V6 more than 10.5 mm. And signs of ventricle hypertrophy in the pictures. On first pictures you see uh, please return to the previous picture. You can check the criteria. It is left ventricle hypertrophy. Second picture. It is signs uh, and wave sizes for right ventricle hypertrophy. Signs of ischemia and MI. It is peaked hyperacute T wave. ST elevation or depression. Both of them can say you about ischemia and MI too. T wave inversion and pathological Q wave. All these pictures you see on the uh, all these signs you can see on the picture. On the down picture, uh, it is a picture of progression of ST elevation myocardial infarction and all these signs with pathological Q with ST elevation with inverted T. Uh, you can see in uh, different moments of progression of myocardial infarction. Uh, peaked hyperacute T wave, it is first picture, second is T elevation, third uh, it is ST depression in subacute stage, on fourth uh, it is T wave inversion, in five picture you see just pathological Q wave, it is chronic stage after, uh, after myocardial infarction. Uh, ischemic ST elevation, uh, new ST segment elevation in at least two contiguous leads. Uh, in uh, younger, uh, uh, more aged men uh, after 40, it is 2 mm in V2, V3 and 1 mm in all other leads. For less age, for younger men, it more than 2.5 mm in V2, V3 and more than 1 in all other leads. For uh, another woman, a little bit other. For women, a little bit other criteria for uh, elevation. It is more than uh, one and a half millimeters in V2, V3, and one millimeter in all other leads. Signs of AV node blocks. First degree, it is constant PR more than 0 0.1 second. First picture, we see it is just PR prolongation. Second degree, it is divided on type 1, type 2. Type 1, it is Wenkenbach or Mobitz 1. It is PR intervals get progressively longer each bit until finally a QRS is dropped. Type 2 or Mobitz 2, uh, it is PR is constant when a QRS is dropped. 
and a third degree AV block, it is no relationship between P waves and uh, QRS complexes. All these sites you see all this picture. More information in our additional courses. Bundle branch block sizes. Sizes. Left bundle branch block. Uh, it characterized by wide QRS, deep S wave in V1, V2, V3, M shaped QRS in V6, abnormalities of ST segment and T wave. Right bundle branch block, wide QRS, M shaped QRS in V1, V2, rabbit errors, wide S wave in V6, abnormalities of ST segment and T wave. Mnemonic for left and right bundle branch block are uh, by science it is William and Merrill. Anamnesis and ACG. What key points that you should remember? Access complaints of the patients. The most usual it is palpitations, intermissions in the walk uh, of the heart, chest pain with uh, typical localization, duration, character of pain, irradiation, provoking and relieving factors. Remember from the lecture about cardiovascular systems. Moreover, it can be episodes of fainting, dizziness, etc. In amnesis is morbi and vitro. We should ask drug history, previous interventions, hospitalizations, family history, cardiovascular diseases, lifestyle habits like diet, smoking, alcohol intake, and occupational conditions. For today, that's all. Thank you for attention. If you have questions, I uh, always wait you for discussion in our Facebook group or in comments under this video. And as usual, please write uh, your name and the group under this video. And for today, goodbye. Th uh, see you on the next lecture in our cycle of propedeptics of internal medicine.